Welcome to Friday's Devotions and as we continue our studies on the subject of prayer using the Catechism we come to question 100 and we're beginning today to, to look at the Lord's Prayer as an example of praying but also as something that teaches so much about the principles of life. So question 100 says what doth the preface of the Lord's Prayer teach us? So the start of the Lord's Prayer what does it teach us? The answer, the preface of the Lord's Prayer, which is our Father which art in heaven, teaches us to draw near to God with all holy reverence and confidence as children to a Father, able and ready to help us, and that we should pray with and for others. So, our Father which art in heaven, it teaches us some wonderful things. The fact that we call him our father, which was so radical and Jesus calling God his father caused the Jews to want to, to stone him. Uh, and it's not a common pattern in most religions that God will be called father. But Jesus teaches us to call him our father. And so a father speaks of security. The difference, Paul writing the Galatians between a, a father and a, a son and a slave was that the son has a confidence. The son has a, an assurance of his position which the slave doesn't have. And when we become Christians, we are adopted into God's family. We are his children. He is our father. We have confidence that he will never leave us nor forsake us. That he will always love those who truly belong to him in Christ. And so in praying our father, it gives us great confidence. But also, we must remember, though, that he's our Father who is in heaven. And that should cause us to have the, the reverence that, indeed, the Catechism speaks about. We should have respect for our earthly fathers. Honour your father and your mother, the commandments say. But how much more should we have respect and reverence for our heavenly Father, for the God who lives in eternal glory, the God who lives an unapproachable light. He is the God who we come to carefully. Uh, sometimes in modern Christianity, God is almost portrayed as a mate, as a chum. Yes, wonderfully, Jesus says we are his friends, but we don't come and treat him like a casual chum or a mate. We don't treat God the Father that way. We come and acknowledge his holiness, his majesty, his glory, his infinite perfection. And so he's a, a father when we are in Christ who we can trust and come to. Come, but he is a heavenly father who we must always come to with great humility. And like everything in the Christian life, this catechism is teaching us that there needs to be a, a balance. A balance between the confidence we have in coming to the Father through Jesus and the reverence, the, the cautiousness we should have. We just come, don't come into his presence and, and blurt out the first thing that comes into our minds. Yes, we're honest. Yes, we're open. We're thinking about that, about David's example of praying in the Psalms. There's an openness there, and we come and are open. But in our openness, we never forget who we're coming to. We come with faith. We come with reverence. We come with care, acknowledging the glory of the God that we're coming to. But there's one other thing that the opening of this prayer teaches. Jesus doesn't say, my Father, who art in heaven. He says we're to pray, our Father. And that teaches us that we are to pray as part of his family. We're to pray to, with his people. Your own devotional life is very important. Your quiet time, your time alone in speaking to the Lord daily, that is very important. But equally important is God's people, men and women, young people, children, coming together to pray together to our Heavenly Father. Oh, wonderful things happen when this takes place. We think of the, the beginning of the book of Acts and the believers coming together in praying in the day of Pentecost came. We think of after the day of Pentecost, it says the end of Acts 2, that the believers committed themselves to prayers and John Stott says it speaks of this public prayer together. We think of Acts 4 and Peter and John arrested, then released. They come together and pray as one. Oh, please, Christians, don't neglect 
praying at home, but don't neglect coming and praying of God's people. Come together and praying with each other and for each other as part of the family of God, the family of Christ. It's as we pray together that our unity will increase, that our love will increase. It will grow in that fellowship. So the, the preface, the opening part of the Lord's Prayer, teaches us that we come with confidence to a Father, we come with reverence to a Heavenly Father, we come together as part of the family and say, Our Father. May God give us the grace to learn from this just opening statement. Amen.